Hello there, people of the web. My name is Anna Novak, and I'm here to talk to you today about High Fidelity, a book written by Nick Hornby, released in 2008, starring John Cusack as a so-called underdog record store owner who finds himself heartbroken by his long-term girlfriend, Laura. He then proceeds to contact all of his past relationships and scoot his way back in to find out where things went wrong. Obviously, this is not the ideal feminist movie, but at least it's funny, charming, and has some great characters. My favorite character in this whole movie, I think, is this guy named Barry, who basically came to the record store one day and never left. He's played by Jack Black and is super hilarious. The writer uses almost a sense of irony and pity to portray Barry because he thinks he knows everything about music, but really he's this music snob that gets fat and plays guitar. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of the classic comedic character in sitcoms and adult animations these days, and you just see it constantly in modern television. Anyway, Rob, John Cusack, is the movie's narrator, guiding us through his world, talking directly into the camera, soliloquizing on his plight, which is that he seems unable to connect permanently with a girl because his, because his attention is elsewhere. But on what? He is not obsessed with his business, and he is not as crazy about music as Barry is. And he is not thinking about the next girl. He's always moping about the last one. Now, this is where I want to pin down the real point of this video. Breaking the fourth wall, as otherwise known talking directly into the camera to narrate a story and essentially addressing the audience as I am doing right now. One classic example of this narration style is in a TV show that I know you guys have all watched, and it is The Office. It is used so well to highlight comedic actions played by characters to then reflect back to the audience to make it seem more relatable. In the first scene of High Fidelity, Rob gets in front of the camera and tells us a story about pop music and how he's not sure if he listens to pop music because he's sad or if he's sad because he listens to pop music. It's a very powerful thing to start off with, um, I think. <laughs> because this narration is so forthcoming, it makes us feel like we have known this Rob character our whole lives, like he's a long-term friend. You also see this as we follow Rob throughout this movie with subtle, with subtle camera movements and angles which kind of make you feel like you're a friend joining in going throughout this story and this plot. This movie is very simplistic, which some, which some people like to call low comedy or slapstick, which for the most part means its resources are used wisely and the script is not overplayed and very simple and just funny and usually for all types of people. Because the movie starts off with breaking the fourth wall narration, um, with like a type of cynical sarcasm from John Cusack, it allows the audience to lay back and relax with a funny film about men just being men. And I think this is why the, mo the movie became so popular right off the bat. One thing, though, that critics have been babbling on since like 2015 is the movie's use of great, fe great male characters, but no strong female characters. Laura is a very, very likable girlfriend, in my opinion. And Sarah is neurotic and needy, played by, Li played by Lily Taylor. And Charlie is su terrifying, superior, and super sexy, played by Catherine Zeta-Jones. But they're upstage 100% of the time. The guy's pain and suffering and loneliness seem to be more important than the character's development of each woman, I guess. Um, the movie is overall raunchy, though. So I guess, you know, what can you expect? In the very beginning, when Rob is breaking the fourth wall and telling us about his painful breakups, he is rating the girls by how much they hurt him and how much they actually meant to him, just like they were numbers. This can be very offensive to some, but in my opinion, it is not to be taken seriously. It is just a way to show that this guy is, yes, he's a dick, but also a man who's been hurt multiple times and wants to journey out and try and fix himself years later. It's a genius way to, to introduce a male lead because it sets up a plot for adventure. So... I want to wrap up this vlog, this vlog by giving the, this movie my own personal rating, and I give this an 8.5 out of 10 because it has great casting and hilarious characters and just like a genius way of breaking the fourth wall, but the ending was so undermining, you know, this, this great female character that I thought would make it big in this movie, she, she gets back with a stick. I mean, I, they were kind of both dicks to each other, but still. <laughs> yeah. So I think if you have not seen this movie, I strongly su suggest that you should because it is highly regarded by a lot of critics and it is super funny and laid back. Um, yeah, so that's the end of this vlog and I hope you have a great break and happy holidays.